This stuff is front page news, game changing, altering the way we live our lives. And there's one man above any other on planet Earth that is right across the detail. He's Sean Keach, Head of Science and Technology at The Sun. Hello, Sean. Good afternoon to you. Good afternoon. That was a very generous introduction, Ian. It was all right, wasn't it? Yeah, I was quite proud. I was quite proud of that. I thought it was rather nice. Um, Listen, have to slip you a fiver when I see you. (laughs) Great to have you with us. Um, Let's talk about. I mentioned I did a little bit of a tease of smart glasses uh, because smart glasses, interesting one, isn't it, in the world of technology? They were around about five, six, seven years ago, and then they kind of disappeared, didn't they? Google had some glasses out, and people talked about them, or they're going to do all sorts of things. Not quite smart in the way we see it today, but they were certainly going to be the must-have new bit of kit. And then they just disappeared. We never saw them again. You'll remember that. What's changed? No, I remember trying out the original Google Glass, and I was amazed at the time. I thought, this is incredible. But then again, you know, you put it down, and then you sort of forget all about it. Because I think at the time when Google Glass was coming out, which was sort of 2013, 2014, that was a time when actually smartphones were really taking off, and they'd Mm. sort of reached this mature point where they were amazing, changing our lives, uh, all of these apps coming out. And so I think they were just, the world wasn't ready for them. Uh, And then obviously, you know, in the past few years, we've seen Meta do these glasses uh, with the cameras built in. Now you can chat to them with AI. And so we're increasingly seeing them uh, you know you've probably seen them people wearing them out and about it's it, you know they're increasingly common because i think they are sort of providing that practical usage now uh, and actually uh, last week i was out in california with amazon at one of their big uh, delivery hubs sort of near silicon valley a very impressive sort of warehouse and they've done a pair of smart glasses um for their drivers which is quite interesting because until now smart glasses have, have sort of been for consumers really but yeah. they're trying to dish out all of these smart glasses to their drivers because they're saying that if they give uh, smart glasses to their drivers the deliveries will be safer, they'll be more efficient. So you'll have all these drivers running around with these glasses on, they've got screens built in, uh, they'll be taking pictures of your doorstep as proof of delivery, they'll have instructions that pop up on the screen showing them where to walk to get to your back garden or your doorstep or through your apartment block. Uh, they've got to give them a go and they're, they're pretty impressive. They'll even warn you if there's a dog on the property, which I thought was quite interesting. Really? Um, I mean, so this so- is... That it's not like you just get your, your, your lenses on the glasses don't turn into just screens as in your vision is blocked out. They, they're kind of, is it wording and instructions that are sort of a, ahead of you, some distance from your eye line? How does that work? Exactly right, and so it's I, I, it's sort of a few feet in front of your eye line, uh, and it's a sort of holographic system, and, and everyone seems to have settled on it being the right lens. I don't know why. There's probably a scientific reason for it, mm. but the sort of the text and the imagery pops up on your right lens. In, in this in this Amazon case, it's all just sort of like green, sort of matrix style text in a way. It's very retro. And so you'll get like maps that'll pop up showing you directions. It'll even warn the driver actually if they've yeah. dropped off the package at the wrong house, which is quite nice. Because uh, I mean, how many times have you had an alert for a package that pops up and then you find out it's gone to your neighbor's house? So that should reduce. And it sort of gives me hope that you know, Amazon is famously very ruthlessly cost efficient. So I can't imagine they'd be dishing out these glasses to all of their drivers if they didn't think that actually it would help make deliveries more well, efficient. Yeah. Because I, they're I mean, obviously the, very tight listed. The bit about taking the photograph with the glasses does make some sense. Because let's be honest, we're all fed up with standing there posing with a parcel in your hand at your own front door while some bloke whips his phone out to take a picture of you. Absolutely. And quite interestingly, also when they're in the van, the cameras kick in and it all highlight the packages that they're meant to pick up to bring to your door so the camera runs even when they're in the back of the van yeah. the only time that the camera switches off actually uh, the glasses switch off entirely is when the um, the van is moving so it's just a purely on foot thing i thought it was quite interesting yeah? so hopefully we should be getting a uh, more efficient package deliveries yeah you've done, you've tested the meta glasses as well haven't you oh yeah they, so they were much better um, and then you can actually buy those. So obviously, the Amazon ones are just for delivery drivers. Yeah. The Meta ones are very impressive. They're out in the US now. I think they're coming to the UK in early 2026, about seven or 800 quid. Uh, and they're full color, so it's not just that, that boring green text. And you'll be able to tap into proper apps like Instagram. You can watch videos on it. Uh, you can use WhatsApp to send and receive text messages. You can uh, use proper maps to walk around the streets and again like you say you're not blocking out what you're seeing it's not like a virtual reality headset you put it on and you can't see anything it's just a little overlay on your vision uh, and actually it's quite bright so that even if you're like staring at the sky and it's a bright day you can still see what you're looking at so wow. it's uh, pretty I, impressive I, yeah i mean i can see because uh, gps um and sat nav 
Uh, in the car makes more sense wh than when you're on foot because we've all done that thing of coming out of a railway station and you look at your phone and it says, and I don't know why it does this, Sean, it says, head northwest. And you think, which way is northwest? How do I know which way is northwest? I've got no idea. I mean, sometimes once you get moving, it will say, do a left, do a right. But the head north or head southeast or whatever, as always, I mean, I've ended up in postcodes I really shouldn't be in, Sean. No, you're absolutely right. And it's so, so often it will get the angle that you're facing completely wrong. And so it's, and what me and my wife tend to do is that when we come out of a train station of somewhere unfamiliar, we'll just start walking in a direction straight away because then we can just get that calibration right away and we know which way we're moving. Ah, so, like, so you don't you hang around. around yes. Up. Just go, just walk, and then you work it out. That's the, that's the kind of um, the, the, the zone of uncertainty when you just get out the station and stop before the GPS has worked out where you are and what, you're, what angle. You're, yeah, I like I like what you've done there. You see, it's almost as if you work in this world, Sean, and know what you're talking. If you about. take nothing else from from today, Ian, that's that's my signal. So, yeah, <laughs> don't don't stand there in the zone of uncertainty, as we shall now call it forever. Um, talking of Amazon, Amazon Prime um, giving away some free benefits. What's this all about? Oh, this is a good one. Uh, it's, it's a gaming one, but it's not just for gamers. Uh, so stay with me here. But if you're a Prime member, you get this freebie now called Amazon Luna, which is basically a sort of Netflix for video games. It includes 50 video games, uh, including Hogwarts Legacy, which is a pretty uh, expensive game normally. Uh, but 25 of the games are called game night games. And they're yeah. basically where you've got friends or family around. Uh, you, you use your phones as controllers. And there's this brilliant game, uh, which is uh, starring Snoop Dogg. It's actually an AI game. And he sort of presides over a court case uh, starring you uh, using AI and so you'll all sort of speak into your microphones and one of you will be a plaintiff one of you will be a defendant and you'll have character witnesses and you'll sort of chat with him and then he'll make judgments on your case and I was playing it in, uh, this weekend with some friends at the Cotswolds and it was great fun We've, we did two or three yeah. court cases uh, brilliant uh, wow. Fibbage and Taboo which are quite popular board games uh, they're also on there for free as well. So it's nice. It's a nice bit of fun. You don't have to pay anything if you're a Prime member, just included with your membership. So if you go into your Amazon Fire Stick or your Fire TV or your Smart TV, just look for the Amazon Luna app and it's free. Just, just plug in your Amazon details and you'll be able to play 25 games for free with wow. your friends and family. Might give it a gotta, go. They can't give you the friends, unfortunately. You've no. got to bring your own friends. Can I, can I might give it a go on the train on the way home. It might be, I'll have to look for the solo games, but we'll see how it rolls. I'll bring you the, uh, the, the evidence of, uh, or the results of what happens, Sean. Um, we're talking about all this technology and, of course, you know, it's amazing and we live in that world because you know, it's often said once the computer chip was uh, designed, then everything was going to change forever and it would always, technicians and scientists and innovators will always find new ways and applications of changing things and you can't stop people with those kind of brains inventing even if half the stuff we don't really need but we quite like it. I mean, do we really need to exist as a human race with special glasses with instructions on how to walk up the road? But, you know, these are geeky stuff. There is a downside, of course, to the world we are currently entering, the world of AI and uh, interconnected digital science and the like, um, and that is that fewer people will be employed, and that's generally seen to be a problem across the board. Uh, we've seen this week, we've been talking great stories about Amazon, but there's a slightly more negative one here, uh, because despite their successes, they're actually getting rid of people in the thousands. This is a story right across Silicon Valley, really. It's ironic because these tech companies have never been, uh, never had high valuations. People are pouring money into them. They're making record profits. And you're right, Amazon this week uh, announced that they're reducing their, their global corporate workforce by 14,000 roles. As Amazon employs somewhere in the region of 1.5 million people uh, across the world, wow. an enormous company, about 350,000 of those are corporate jobs. And uh, that's what's affected by these layoffs, so 14,000 roles. Uh, and they've put out this big blog post from their senior VP of people, Beth Galetti. She said, this generation of AI is the most transformative technology we've seen since the internet. It's enabling companies to innovate much faster. And mm. we're convinced that we need to be organized more leanly with fewer layers and more ownership. So they're saying they want to reduce bureaucracy. They're trying to cut out that sort of layer of middle management. Obviously, it's an enormous, enormous layoff. Yeah. And I think really what it comes down to is that these tech companies are very keen to operate like startups because you're seeing in Silicon Valley these very small companies that are getting huge amounts of investment. I mean, just look at the growth of OpenAI, which mm. created ChatGPT. You know, companies can start very small and then suddenly be getting billions of dollars. And I think these big companies are 
they're very, very panicky that they're moving too slowly, they can't operate efficiently. And so that's why you're seeing these massive, massive layoffs across these, these tech companies, because they're very worried that the small companies are, are going to usurp them or certainly usurp parts of their businesses. So 14,000 people, they're saying that they're going to get severance pay, they'll get an opportunity to find a new role internally. But yeah. I think gone are the days where these sort of tech companies are a job for life. I think you saw it's a sort of bit of a deal with the devil, you know, you join yeah. and yeah, the yeah. compensation is in incredible, but you are very much at risk of being caught up in one of these massive, massive layoffs, 14,000, 30,000, 20,000 yeah, people. Yeah. Uh, it's quite unprecedented. I indeed. And of course, the world of AI will will get its claws in, and tentacles into all sorts of areas where the, the, the upshot might be the same. Somebody said to me at the weekend, Sean, something I'd never thought about before, but it kind of frightened the life out of me. So that as AI, um, you and I have used this expression before, when it comes to AI, and we're looking at the amazing things that it can do, uh, but this is week one, you know, we're at first base on AI, we haven't yet gone anywhere near what this is going or how this is going to transform the world. A guy said to me, you do realise that with AI, when it's on full capacity, there'll be no secrets. And I said, what do you mean? He said, well, there'll be no state secrets. That will be impossible because AI will just be able to give you such an, ad such a, an accurate guess uh, what has gone on that it will be, you know, pretty tip top. And I thought, well, OK, that's open to a bit of debate. But he also said, but it'll be the same with friends and family because if you've got something you're not telling a friend and they're desperate to find out, a, a few key words into AI when it's really at that level and a few analytics doing the job will will give you, in the law of probability, yes, your girlfriend is cheating on you with the Amazon man, you know, the fellow with the glasses, that kind of thing. It's going to be able to come out and tell you that, and it will be almost a dead cert that it's got it right. What do you say to that? Uh, absolutely. I think it's a very difficult privacy situation. And uh, not to go off on a massive tangent here, but also what people are worried about from a privacy perspective is quantum computers, which are these computers that will be able to make uh, enormous calculations much faster than regular computers. And they're worried that in the future, these quantum computers will be so good that they'll be able to break the current encryption we have on all of the you know social media platforms, texts. Uh, because they, because to them it will be a very simple uh, mm. puzzle to solve in a way that currently it would take computers, you know, hundreds of thousands of years yeah, to crack. Yeah. So that's one of the big uh, problems facing uh, your privacy. And of course, AI as well. You know, if it's ingesting private information, I mean, we see leaks all the time uh, just you know through regular social media platforms. I think what, once uh, that data starts getting chucked into AI systems, it'll be much easier for cyber criminals to pass yeah. what's going on in your life. Uh, and then, you know, ultimately, as you say, you probably will have situations where people will use it to, to spy on well, each yes, other. And he, I think he, it comes down to the platforms regulating he, uh, he uh, to did, stop yeah, that from happening. That, well, that would be the only hope, but of course people will have their little workarounds. But he, he mentioned that as well, quantum computing, along with AI and all that goes with it. It's going to be a really bizarre world that we live in. And uh, I think it's quite interesting on the regulation point as well, because, yeah. I mean, AI is so complicated, and look how difficult it's been to regulate uh, really what are very simple apps like Facebook and TikTok and Instagram, you know, they're not particularly complicated and yet it's been a nightmare for the last sort of two decades to try and regulate them in any meaningful yeah. way. So it doesn't give me a lot of hope that we're going to do a good job with AI, but, you know, fingers crossed, Ian. Maybe AI can lead us, lead us forward. Well, yeah, I mean, it, it, may well, it may well turn out that AI becomes, you know, the, the, divides up between AI and super AI, you know, and you show your allegiance. Like, you know, do you support Chelsea or Liverpool? Uh, you'll have the, your preferred AI that can do better than the other AI. Who knows? Um, my favourite tech story of the week, however, has to go to Nike and their new trainers uh, because they've done something here that I think clearly... Uh, it might be early stages. I don't know. You can tell us, Sean, but clearly the shape of things to come. What have they been up to in the footwearing department? Nike has created robot shoes, uh, which sounds bonkers, and it is a bit bonkers, but they're real. They've tested it on 400 uh, runners, and basically they help you run, uh, jog, walk. So it, it looks like a regular shoe, but then it sort of has an ankle mount at the top uh, that wraps around your ankle, and then it sort of moves in sync uh, with your leg. Uh, robotically, they're calling it a second set of calf muscles. So they're saying it'll make it easier to, to move. You'll be able to run for longer. It'll be able to quicken your pace. Uh, and then ultimately, if you don't want the robot bit on, you can whip it off and wear them like normal training but they're sort of comparing it as uh, to an e-bike for your feet uh, and you know it's, it's this sort of it's sort of like a, a very small chunk of an exoskeleton in a way yeah, uh, yeah. You, you know you'll be able to run for miles run much faster uh, and uh, you know maybe one day you can just sprint to work instead of uh, hopping on the tube
or well, driving in your car. <laughs> I remember Elon Musk saying years ago in an interview, and I can't remember the context, but he said we're part cyborg already. Um, what he was talking about was wearable technology, essentially. Um, and it's kind of true that if you think about, you know, you've got your watch on, you've got your glasses and your trainers, uh, that is, you know, the kind of stuff we would we would have, we would have watched in an old sci-fi movie where you know wow look what they do you've got superhumans because they've got special feet and they've got special powers with their eyes and the special powers they can do with uh, th th they they can regulate their heart by looking at a, 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 a their watch etc. All of this stuff is flipping real, Sean. Absolutely, and AirPods, I think, are actually quite a good example of this because a lot of people now will just have their AirPods in, you know, all day long, and it sort of, in a way, does feel a bit like an early form of bionic man. I think what's interesting here is this sort of like augmenting your body with robotics. Previously, that was sort of you would see that in the medical field, you know, to help people walk again, or the military field of, you know, can we create super soldiers? But this, is, I think, is quite a good example of actually this is just purely for consumers. Uh, this probably isn't going to be used in competitive racing because they're not going to allow it. Uh, uh, you know, this isn't a, a medical or military thing, although I, I suppose you could use it for that. This is just going to be aimed really at regular people who want to uh, you know, walk a bit easier, walk a bit further, run yeah. a bit faster. I, I um, might, I might, fun. I might get the attachments for my Lilac Air Jordans uh, with high tops. Uh, we'll have to, uh, we'll have to see. Uh, listen, Sean, <laughs> always good to have you on with us. Thank you, Sean Keach. He is head of science and technology over there at the Sun.